Okay, well, Ken forgot to hit the record button, and I'm making this separate little video for that part that we missed. So <clears throat> I wanted to go back to Unit 1 a little bit and talk about descriptive geometry. And we used to have full classes where all you did was drew geometry the whole class and understanding how to draw that and how important it is because Monge actually was, um, he was, his name is actually on the Eiffel Tower. He actually helped draw a lot of that descriptive geometry for that, for that erection. And so we want to go back here to, and I'm going to undo all this stuff here. Um, the main thing that we're talking about is multiple view or multi-view drawings. And multi-view drawings, um, multi-view drawings are multiple views of the same part. So multiple view drawings of the same part. And what we're trying to do is show a flat view of this part. You can show this view like this all you want. But we cannot dimension, you know, if I tried to put an X dimension right here, this line would be foreshortened because it's at an angle. We have to have everything square and flat to our drawing. So what we're trying to do is we, we're trying to make multiple views, as many views necessary, as to fully define the part. So what we need to do is find a primary view. What view of this part would be like, if I could have just one view of this part, which one would be the most descriptive? And it might be the front, it has a hole in it, I can see angles, I can see this notch, I can see that there's a shift in the plane right here or something's going on. So it would be like me putting a piece of paper out here and tracing and what we want to do is trace the tangible or the touchable edges. What could I touch from this side of the part? And those become our visible solid lines. So this gives us our primary view. If I looked at the side view, I could touch these lines. I could touch all these edges. And so that's what I want to draw in there. And don't worry about these, these lines. Uh, they're center lines and hidden lines, and we'll talk about those in another video. But from a projection of the top view, this is what this would look like if I were to trace the touchable edges up here. There would be the solid lines. All right, and that's just a recap from Unit 1, and we're rolling right into Unit 2. And I'm going to go all the way back on this one because we kind of got kind of debacle. Essentially, what happened was Kim forgot to hit the record button. So here we go. Multi-view drawings. And I'm going to take off all this stuff all the way back. Let me close this. And let's open a fresh one. That doesn't have all the markups. So if I looked at this, this picture, and I see this picture, and I want to dimension or draw these features. And features would be something with the surface, like the side of the bus, the windows, the doors, the mirror, the wheels. I wouldn't get a true view of the shape of this object in this view. So what I want to do is flatten it out. And this would be your, your job. Your job would be to say, what would be the most descriptive? If I had just one view of this school bus without the text on it, what would, if you could recognize it, would, would the front, would it look like a school bus? From the side, would it look like a school bus or a bus? I would think maybe the side view. So instead of the misnomer of front view, we call that the primary view. So this is what I might start with. I might start with this primary view and draw the outline or the shape of this view. Now, because at angles we don't get the true shape, 
we're going to show the other views that are necessary to fully, fully explain this bus by turning it, turning our primary view. If I have this in my hand, I want to turn it 90 degrees to get to another flat. It's like a box. A box has six sides, right? So I could have six views. I could have more than six views if necessary. Or maybe I only need two. Maybe I only need one. Maybe I need three. The main thing is if you're replicating information, like if this view is exactly the same as this view, maybe I don't need it. So we're going to talk about which one that we keep. Let's start with this one. And it could be the left or right hand side, but this one has a door on it. So I'm going to start with that one. If I want to draw the top view, if I need the top view, if I touch the top edge of this, I'm going to rotate it so that my finger is on the top. So I'm going to rotate that bus toward me to look at the top 90 degrees. And then that would be the top view. Notice that these are directly in alignment. So the length of the bus, it's the same part. Imagine these were all multiple parts and we lined them up. This would look the same. It would measure the same left to right and it's in alignment left to right. The right hand view we're going to rotate. I'm going to touch the right side or the grill and I'm going to rotate it toward me. So the trick here is I don't rotate from this view. If I did, that view would be right here. I always have to come back to the primary view because this is what I'm projecting geometry. I'm rotating to the right hand view. I'm rotating to the top view. I'm rotating to this view and this view. All right, we'll talk about the, the rear view later. But um, if I come back, so I have to come back to my front view, touch the right hand side, and in this position, if I rotate toward me, and then I will be seeing the right view of my primary view. This is really what we wouldn't call the view of this bus. We call this a front, but we're calling this the primary view, the right side view of the primary, the top view of the primary. And then if I touch the bottom and rotate toward me, I'll be looking at the axle and the drivetrain. Now, the same thing happens with the left view. If I touch the, the left side, go back to my primary that I'm going to project from and then touch the left side and rotate toward me 90 degrees so that when I put my finger on that bus right here and I rotate it, my finger is on top of that bus, not behind it. That's my left side view, left side of the primary. We would call this the back. But let's talk about this view. This view is not projected from the front. This view is projected from the left hand view. So if I touch the left side of this bus and rotate toward me, I get the back side of the bus. Now the thing is that we don't skip a view like this. And you might see some drawings that, that just label their views. And it doesn't make sense because they're not projected views. They're all over the place and it just says front, right, top. That doesn't help us explain the part better. So I cannot skip from my primary view to the back. I have to show how I get there by adding the left view and then the rear view. If I need the rear view, maybe I don't put in the right view. I put in the, rear, the left view and so that I can get to the rear view. You know, if two views are exactly the same and I'm not getting anything out of a view, I probably don't need it. And what do I mean getting anything out of it? If there's nothing that I need to describe, locate, or annotate in that view, I don't need that view. If I have a cone, uh, let's say uh, like an ice cream cone, and I turn it from, I'm looking at it from the side, it's got a profile, and if I turn it to the other side, it looks exactly the same. Turn it to the other side, it looks exactly the same. I may not need those views. So this is pretty cool. This is a black glass box. And if we were on campus, we actually have someone made one of these. And imagine you had the part and you put it inside the box. Then you came over and you traced 
you trace the part onto the glass sides. So this is what I can touch. This is what I can see in the front. This is what I can see in the top. This is what I can see in the right hand side. Pretty cool, right? So you could go around all sides of the part and project that geometry or project that or trace it onto the sides of that box. Then you could unfold that box and you would have every view. So remember that these need to be vertically in line and these want to be horizontally in line. If you don't do that, it makes for a lot more work and it's not near as clear. And this is, would be all six sides of that part. And we talked about this before. Okay, this is a good view of this part because it shows me its shape. Now, if I were going to cut this out, this would be a good side to cut this shape out. I could drill this hole right here. I could make this cylinder, but I don't know how far to cut that down. And I don't know how far to cut right here. I could drill that hole. So I need at least a side view. What can I not get in any other view but the side view? I can't get this angle in any other view but the side view. Maybe the bottom view. So that tells me how many views I need. If I have a hole in a view, I need that view, at least one view of it. That tells me right away. So I cannot get this angle and this front view. So I need this right hand side view. I need this for the depth of this. I need this for the depth of the cylinder. All right. And then, oh. Well, I didn't even see that we have some holes in that were drilled from the top down because they're counter bore. They have a shallow hole and then they have another hole that goes through. So we always show that where both of them are visible. I have to show this view because I have holes in it real quick, real easy. And I have these rounds. They're quarter rounds like you would get like trim at Lowe's or Home Depot and they're full quarters, like a full quarter of a circle. And we call those a radius, which is a half of a full circle or a diameter. That's how we dimension it or say the size. And then we can also call it a fillet. It's not a fillet, but it's fillets, rounds, or radii or radius. Okay, just to give you some background, a full circle is a diameter. That's a full circle. So we have a full circle cylinder, full diameter cylinder, we have full diameter holes. So we need this view, this view, and this view at a very minimum. If you need more views for more description, it's up to you. Okay, and at this point, I think we got to line types in the next video. So I'm going to stop right here.